Hello everyone, this is Deborah Richardson and today I am putting the AP in Happy where accounts payable teams are empowered to protect the vendor master file from fraud. This podcast will give a voice to accounts payable team members by talking about the growing reality of cyber attacks in their world and which vendor setup and vendor management techniques they can apply to protect the vendor master file from fraud. Visit the Vendor Process Training Center to enroll in your choice of 55 plus training sessions that will help you and your team avoid fraud, compliance fines, and bad vendor data. Or just sign up to get access to Vendor Process FAQs and to attend weekly drop-in live Q&A sessions. Visit training.deborahrrichardson.com today. The link will be in the show notes. The United States Postal Inspection Service. Wait, they're real? Yes, and here are five tips that you can use to combat fraud. Keep listening. Welcome to episode 235, five tips from the United States Postal Inspection Service that your team can use to combat fraud. Now, first of all, I have to say that number one, I didn't even know that was a thing. So maybe you're smarter than I am. I am sure you are, right? you knew that there was United States Postal Inspection Service. And I have probably heard of them before, but I never really gave a second thought to them. I certainly didn't know what they did. I also never looked them up, never, you know, um, use them as a reference for anything. But after uh, today, that or as of today, that has changed. And I'll tell you how I heard about them. So I I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I am studying for my uh, certified fraud uh, examiner certification. And they had an annual um, uh, fraud conference, the local chapter, which I belong to, and I joined the board. Uh, Anyway, they have a local chapter and every year they have an annual fraud conference. And so I went, this was my first year. And so I went and it was so exciting and so um, interesting about the different aspects of fraud through the eyes of different organizations. And so we had uh, not only the United States Post Office come in, but we also had AARP. We also had the IRS. Um, we also had Crime Stoppers. And so everybody talked about fraud, but in a slightly different way. And so it was a very interesting day. But when the um, postal inspector came up and talked, I was just a little blown away because I didn't really pay, again, pay much attention to them. So let me just start off with a little history of the United States Postal Inspection Service. And I got this information from their website, which is USPIS.gov, because we're used to going to US. Yes.gov for the regular United States Postal Service stuff. Maybe some of you will do the uh, address lookup so you can get the right stand or you can standardize the address, make sure it's valid. Uh, but for the United States Postal Inspection Service, you go to USPIS.gov. And when you go there, you can click on the about tab and they'll have a history page at, or a link you can click on. And when you click on that, you can read about the history on a timeline or you can watch a, a video, like a 20 minute video that they have. Anyway, they will say, or they say on their page that they are 247 years old. Now, Ben Franklin, yes, all the way back to Ben Franklin in the 1700s. And he was the first postmaster general. And when he was appointed as 
Postmaster General, he appointed William Goddard as a surveyor. Now, the surveyor is the forerunner to the postal inspector, and the earliest reported date that Goddard served as a surveyor is August 7th. 1775. Now, what the surveyor did back then was they investigated stolen mail or postal funds. And back then, it was usually perpetrated by postal employees that were entrusted with the mail. All right. So that's the history. So here's what they, uh, what they do. Uh, actually, if you look at their website and, uh, you click on the link that tells you what they do, it's really a long list, but in general, if it has anything to do with preserving the safety, security, and, te- and integrity of the nation's mail system from criminal misuse then they do it. Uh, The postal inspectors, they are federal law enforcement officers who carry firearms, they make arrests, they execute federal search warrants, and they serve subpoenas. And if you look around their site, again, under the about, and you click on the what we do, you'll see that You know, they've got pictures there that show them looking just like police. They've got the bulletproof vests on. The only way that you would know that they're not the police or maybe even SWAT is because their uniform says uh, police, but underneath it says U.S. Postal Inspection. So they have the U.S. Postal Inspection somewhere. Otherwise, to me, looking at these pictures, they look kind of like SWAT. All right, so here's a list, and I'm just going to go through this really quickly. Um, They have a list of what they do, and so they have protecting USPS, protecting the USPS employees. Uh, They also handle illegal narcotics, mail and package theft, identity theft, mail fraud, fraud prevention and education. And I guess that was part of what uh, I witnessed today because they were educating us at this uh, conference with their presentation. Uh, They also deal with suspicious mail, disaster response, money laundering, cybercrime, global mail security, and also child exploitation. So all of that definitely backs up what they say on their homepage security, it comes with the stamp. Well, I guess it does. All right. So with that, now that you know who they are, a little bit of history of them, what they do, let's talk about some tips that they give that I think may help you, the accounts payable team, the vendor team, your company, right? Avoid fraud. So they have a page or a menu item called tips and prevention. And when you click on that, you can uh, click on several different categories. And so I went through all of them and I picked out the five tips that I think will help uh, accounts payable teams, vendor teams uh, combat fraud uh, within their company. And so let's go ahead and get started. So the first one is if you are shipping packages, and this would probably pertain more, although maybe it has a broader scope, right? If you are still hybrid or remote and you've got employees that you are shipping uh, documents to uh, or packages that could contain uh, documents or, you know, other things that could be considered sensitive. Uh, I know during the pandemic, hopefully many of you are not doing that or no longer doing that, right? Checks were being uh, sent uh, via via mail uh, because people were, or your employees were printing checks from their homes. And so hopefully you are not doing that again uh, or any longer because that is a really a breach in internal control. But in any event, maybe you have other documents, other uh, uh 
items that are being placed in a box that if it were stolen, uh, then it would cause harm to you, your customers, your vendors. And so you want to make sure that it gets to the employee that you are sending it to. Well, a great thing that or a great tip that they have is to uh, select hold for pickup. Now that is only useful when you are shipping packages. Uh, otherwise, if it's just a letter or something, you can do uh, uh, other uh, methods in order to get them to come to the post office and actually pick it up or to have it delivered directly to them and no one else. But if you're shipping a package, uh, use the service hold for pickup. And then that way, they have to come to the post office to pick it up. And so you don't have to worry about porch pirates and whatever's in that box getting into the wrong hand. So that I do like. Um, that's the first tip. The second one is, uh, so this is also regarding packages, but this is if you receive a suspicious package. Now, I never really thought about this, but uh, if you think about what is a suspicious package, those are things that do not have a return address. Uh, they might be leaking, right? So if they're leaking at the post office, you're not going to get it. The post office is going to uh, take that package and inspect, uh, inspect it. But if it starts leaking when you get it, uh, then that means that it is a suspicious package. Another thing though, actually two more things, is if it has lots of tape um, just right? Lots of tape around it. That could be a suspicious, uh, an indicator that it's a, a suspicious package. The other thing is that if it has like regular postal stamps, but it has like a lot of them because, you know, it costs more to ship a package. So you have all these postal uh, stamps, actual stamps on that package. That means that they did not go into the post office. And uh, if they didn't go into the post office, then that could be because they didn't want to be caught on camera. Uh, they didn't want to, you know, swipe their card because they'll capture it then. So they will put uh, stamps on it and then mail it using those stamps. And you all know that when you go into a post office and you try to give your package to the postal worker to um, attach postage on it, they're going to type all that information in the address. They're going to get the exact postage that is required. They may ask if you want insurance, right? So they're going to go through that whole thing. But when they put the postage on the package, it's going to be one label with that total amount of the postage. It is not going to be right. A gazillion forever stamps. So if you have a package that has multiple stamps on it, that could be a suspicious package. And so what they say to do is one, isolate the item. And then two, make sure you maintain a safe distance. Uh, wash your hands, and then you want to call the postal inspectors at 1-877-876-2455. Now I'm going to put this telephone number in the show notes along with all of the other pages that I talked about on the United States Postal uh, Inspection Service page. So make sure that uh, you check the show notes. I do have a couple other links coming up that I didn't talk about yet. All right. So that's the first two. They both had to do with packages. Now, the next one is kind of something that I've already talked about before. And they say to deposit mail close to pickup time. And what they're talking about is the blue USPS mailboxes. And the reason that they're saying that is because mail has been stolen out of those blue boxes. And the thieves will take that mail, identify or grab all the checks out. They will whitewash those checks and then deposit them into accounts so that they can get the funds uh, from those checks. Now, the podcast episode where I was talking about the check fraud is actually podcast episode 226, and it was titled, why check fraud is exploding right now. And so if you haven't listened to that episode, I would go ahead and check that out. 
because I do talk about um, the robberies that are occurring in these blue mailboxes. Uh, but that does lead us a nice segue into the next tip, and that is to subscribe for their scam alerts. And you guys know me, I have well, maybe you don't know. And if you don't know, definitely subscribe. But I have a new scam alerts um, page that is on the Vendor Process Training Center. And every time I hear of new scams, I will post them. And when I post them, if you are subscribed, the very next day, you'll get one email with like all of the new scam alerts that I posted the previous day. So I'm going to put the link in the description so you can sign up for that if you haven't already. But in any event, I am uh, very adamant about making sure that uh, there are resources out there and letting you guys know where you can keep up with the newest uh, scams and frauds. And so what I like about the Postal Inspection Service, uh, they have a news tab. And if you click on the news tab, then you can scroll down and you can see news articles, wanted posters, alerts, news scams. And what's interesting is there are quite a few of uh, these wanted posters where in certain areas, uh, city and states, they have uh, armed robbery of USPS letter carrier. This one happens to be in Dearborn. And then if I uh, scroll down, there's another one from uh, uh, Youngsville, Coyote, and El Rito, New Mexico. And then if I keep scrolling down, there's another one where it's from Chicago, Illinois. Again, the robbery of USPS letter carrier. And these things or these robberies, oh, here's more Portland, Oregon. Again, robbery of USPS letter carrier. Uh, and so Stockton, California is another one. And I, I have the feeling that if I keep clicking, it'll keep being more. Yes, here's another one, Orlando, Florida. And by the way, all of these are either from March of 2023 or April of 2023. And this podcast is being recorded at the end of April. So all of those I said were just now, um, were in the last 60 days. So this is not old information. This is what's happening. They're robbing the USPS letter carriers and uh, that is maybe one way that they're getting those keys to open those blue mailboxes and then steal the, uh, steal the checks out of those. So you might want to go ahead and just subscribe. And when you subscribe, they give you the option to subscribe to multiple lists. And I would say to subscribe to the news articles, the press releases, the scam articles, and the wanted posters. Uh, and again, check out episode 226 if you want to hear more about why check fraud is exploding right now and some ways that other ways that you can protect your checks or protect your company from check fraud. And by the way, this may not apply to your company, may, uh, may apply to you if you still write uh, personal checks. Uh, this can also apply to older relatives, right? So you might want to let them know as well. So I talked about the frosters or the thieves uh, stealing these checks and then whitewashing them. Well, it turns out the postal inspector that delivered the presentation today said that if you use a gel pen, it's harder to whitewash. Now, I know this may not be a tip for business checks because uh, typically you don't use a pen, right? Those are automatically printed with the information on them and most of them also with a uh, with the signature already stamped on or already on. But if you use a pen at all on your checks, especially your personal checks, make sure you use a gel pen because uh, at least maybe that will give the uh, make it harder for the thieves or the frosters to whitewash it. And the last tip that I have is 
you can report a crime to the Postal Inspection Service. And as a matter of fact, if any of you uh, have gotten maybe for work, because I know a lot of you may have work phone, work cell phones, if you've gotten texts that uh, say your package uh, is uh, is delayed or you need to pay for, you know, uh, pay the additional shipping for your package and click this link right from your, uh, from text messaging, which is technically smishing. And I know I've done a new, a couple of new scam alerts related to the packages, uh, those, you know, fraudulent, uh, text messages, especially around the holidays. I didn't realize, and so I didn't say it, but you can report those. Matter of fact, you can forward that same text, just forward it to spam at uspis.gov and they will investigate it. So that is a great tip because I know, especially around holidays and we, we all know Mother's Day is coming up, right? And so the thieves know that too. So just keep that in mind. And again, I'm going to have that link in the show notes. All right, so I hope these five tips were valuable for you. Hopefully you got one or two or three or maybe all that you can use to avoid or combat fraud in your company. Uh, Let me go ahead and just restate them or summarize them really quickly. So the first one was to use hold for pickup when shipping packages. And the second one is to contact the uh, postal inspection service if you receive a suspicious package. And they also, or I also talked about how to determine what a suspicious package is. Uh, the third one is to deposit mail close to pickup time in those blue boxes uh, when you use the blue boxes. And then the fourth one is to subscribe to their scam alerts, press releases, wanted posters, news articles. It's just one uh, subscription and you just identify which list. And then the last one is you can report a crime to the postal inspection service. And a great one is to forward any, uh, suspicious texts from the U.S. Postal Service about shipping or packages. And so you can forward them directly to their spam email address. And again, I'll put that uh, link in the or email address in the show notes. And by the way, if any of you are vendor process training members where you have access to all of my 45 different training sessions, or you enrolled in one of them, which is the frauds and new scam alerts that I talk about at the, uh, the last Thursday of every month, I am now going to add to my list of um, where you can sign up for new scams and frauds. I'm going to add to that list the uh, United States Postal Inspection Service Uh, So you'll see an additional one. Every time I hear about a new one, I add them. I think the last new one that I added was the IRS new scam alerts. Actually, they have a subscription that's just like um, the USPIS, right? Just like the Postal Inspection Service, where you can subscribe to different lists. And one of those lists is on fraud. And so I am adding now the Postal Inspection Service subscription. a list to subscribe to, to learn about uh, new scams and frauds. And if you want more information on the Vendor Process Training Center, where you can find information either on that uh, training session or on the training pass, that link is also in the show notes. All right. So thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed the 235th episode of the Putting the AP in Happy podcast, where accounts payable teams are empowered to protect the vendor master file from fraud. Don't forget to check the show notes for the links mentioned in the podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing and writing a review of my podcast on the platform that you use to listen. Stay happy. Thank you.